Hey, what's up everyone? BDF44 coming at you with another video. Alright, here to react to the game that we just saw with the Los Angeles Lakers, Portland Trailblazers in Portland. It was horrible for the Lakers. Um, and then for Portland, it was a really, really, really easy win. What I saw out there in the highlights, because I wasn't actually able to see the game as usual, not that I really wanted to, to be honest with you. When I saw the score, saw some of the stuff that was going on in the link I was watching, I was cool. We were down by a lot. It was it was ugly. Uh, but there were some things to take away. I'd like to start off on a positive note. Uh, what I liked was seeing Malik Monk and um, uh, Wayne Ellington coming out there and kind of getting their feet wet. Their shot started to fall. I'm looking for players who are coming back from injury to kind of get their conditioning going and start to play well um, as they come back. So so that was what I was hopeful to see, and I was encouraged by that. They got some minutes tonight, and they, they, they were able to contribute and uh, just kind of shake off the rust from their injuries. So that that's what I like. I also like the effort from Austin Reeves defensively, even though he was getting cooked. It wasn't because he was misreading what he was doing, and it wasn't because he was not um, – Given out, given the effort that was necessary, I felt like he was just, he was tracking people nicely. He was keeping his hands up. He was doing all the stuff right. He was not fouling, and guys were just hitting tough shots over him. So, in situations like that, you just take your hats off to the offensive player, and you move on. And it was a whole lot of that in the highlights. Guys were definitely doing their thing, but it wasn't because he was making mistakes. He was just being, being, uh, you know, on he was on he was on some very good players tonight, you know, and they were doing their thing. What I saw out there tonight also was just a lack of proper positioning from our centers. I think that's a coaching thing. Um, I don't I don't want to put that on DeAndre Jordan. And I'll, I'll, I'll just single DeAndre Jordan out because was, he was the player that I saw that was kind of having the issue out there. Nurkic had 17 boards tonight, but we were able to play our centers on the floor. They just seemed to be out of position at all times. Uh, DeAndre Jordan just seemed to be playing too far away from the basket um, to really be of service to us. And that was what I was noticing. It was like a lot of stuff, even from the beginning of the game, he was – playing too far away to be impactful on the rim and it was just like it's like he's hovering like maybe a step inside of the free throw line and all of the action was happening behind him so we were getting blow bys we were having situations where guys were able to just pick the ball off the rim situations where he's trying to guard players shooting jump shots while the ball is is, is coming off the rim and, and Nurkic is in position to get it but it'll be like three and four Lakers in position to, to box out Nurkic, but they're all small. So it's like DeAndre Jordan should not be the guy trying to, uh, to, 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 to chase guys out to jump shots. That should be the guards. So it was just like, why are they trying to do his job? He's trying to do their job. And it was a consistent thing that I kept seeing Nurkic able to take advantage of. He was constantly sealing out guys like Wayne Ellington and, and Carmelo Anthony. And I'm like, but DeAndre's on the floor chasing guys out to the to the three-point line try to contest shots like that it was just kind of it just looked like if if you just if you put players on the floor um and you put them out of position and the defense or the offense rather takes advantage of that um that's kind of what i saw it's just some things that could have been tweaked differently that ultimately would have just given us a much better put us in a much better position to rebound and defend them. So, yeah, did we have some effort issues out there? I saw some effort issues tonight that I didn't see in the previous games. I think guys are getting tired of being frustrated. I think guys are kind of tired of losing, and I think guys are, uh, you know, reacting to the fact that they're on the road. That's that's possibly it. I think a lot of them understood that they were going to be kind of going undermanned because LeBron James was out. And then, unfortunately, uh, we lost AD in the game with two, some type of stomach ailment or something. So he only gave us about seven minutes, and then he had to go ahead and call it a night. So ultimately, the Lakers were super undermanned, and really we just had to kind of chalk that up to that. But, um, yeah, just, just some really bad, 
positioning and 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 thus Portland just completely just crushing us. It was it was not pretty to watch. It wasn't pretty at all. Russell Westbrook, uh, you know, in the highlights, I, I saw that he was able to hit a three here and there. I, I just couldn't honestly tell you what happened because I didn't see it. Highlights just really gave me no understanding of what I was watching in terms of the game itself. So just just don't know. But um, I, I saw that Sekou Dembuya got some minutes. He didn't miss a shot. He was four for four. So that was very encouraging. Um, Jay Huff was also able to get on the floor. Unfortunately, the highlights did not show those guys do anything, so I have no idea. Just very very disappointed in that aspect of it. I was hoping to see a little more in those highlights. Uh, so, um, yeah, i give you what I can. Uh, all in all, that was a horrible game for the Los Angeles Lakers and a very encouraging game for the Portland Trailblazers. If you want to check some things out on their side, uh, Anthony, Sy- Anthony Simons really popped off the floor tonight. He was getting... He was getting to the rim at ease, uh, really showing his athleticism, showing his skill set. He's a real slick player who's gaining confidence by the game, and I just love what what's happening there under Chauncey Billups. Uh, Billups is getting the most out of that kid, and it, it's it's really good to see. Nazir Little's getting some run out there. He looked great, um, just using his energy and, and all of that to, to to make impact plays on that side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball, rather. Um, and offensive side, really, he was doing some good things. Uh, you know, obviously, Dame, Dame's been struggling quite a bit with his shot, and tonight he was able to hit some good ones for them. Uh, st- I would say he's still in, still not out of the woods in regards to his slump, but he definitely had a better game than he's been having. So I think that was encouraging for Portland fans. CJ's continuing his stellar play. He he shot us completely out of the, out of the game. I mean, he was consistent. He was really killing us. Um yeah, they did. They just had a good, good game from the rest of their their team. And Larry Nance had some good, good moments out there, um, you know. And they were just able to collectively use their size to overpower us. It was Nurkic, 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 all over the place. Nurkic, rebound this, rebound that, lay up here, lay up. I mean, it was just like I always say the Lakers are best when they go big. But tonight we went big and played small. That's what I saw. We, we we had big players on the floor, but it was like they weren't out there at all because Nurkic was able to dominate. And it wasn't like he was dominating then. As I said, DeAndre Jordan wasn't even on him. Like, he wasn't, he didn't even have to deal with DeAndre's big body. He was, it was the strangest dynamic down there. And I have to look at the coaching staff and say, even though we're undermanned, um, you know, having LeBron James not be out there, AD had to be removed. You know, Russell Westbrook is kind of running the point guard, and he's we're, we're discovering that that's not what we want him to do, um, or that's not what he's best at doing, unfortunately, for our team. And it's just a lot of stuff that, that the coaching staff has to readjust to on the road. I mean, when do you when do you figure all of this out, right? But some things are just easy to figure out, easy adjustments. Hey, DeAndre, take two steps in to the paint. And, and camp there because we're getting killed on the boards. We don't need you contesting mid-range jump shots. We need our guards and our forwards doing that. Just take two steps backwards further into the paint and and hover there a little more so than you did tonight. And I guarantee you, a lot of those offensive rebounds, a lot of those issues that were happening, they, they just don't happen. It was literally just as simple as DeAndre pushing himself backwards and then just doing all the same things. Um and I guarantee you, I mean, absolutely guarantee you it's a difference. Um, and, yeah, so on and so forth. I mean, we weren't going to win that game anyway, to be honest with you guys. I, I just think that we were walking into a Portland situation where they're surging. They're really surging right now. They're finding something in a lot of different places, even though uh, Dame is struggling. The rest of the team is picking it up, and uh, they're firing all, all cylinders right now. Norman Powell is another guy who, who really did some good things tonight. He's on, he's on a hot tear as well Tyler Zeller they also have that player in, in place to provide size so it's like you know Portland's finding things and we're 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 struggling we're undermanned and we're going to their gym and, and anybody who watches the Lakers historically knows that we don't play well in Portland anytime we go there no matter what era it is we usually we're going to lose so um it's an historical truth <laughs> that I've come to understand and uh 
you know, it doesn't really carry over to the playoffs. We usually knock them off in the playoffs. But in the regular season, just going into that building with that, that black and red, we usually have trouble. So it was no surprise to me that we lost. I wasn't going to bet on this one. No way, no how. Um, so and that's that, man. I mean, it's, a whole, it's not a whole lot you can really contribute to to a loss with, without your stars. I think we just have to continue to work on getting healthy. Every passing game means we're getting closer and closer to THT and, and Trevor Ariza joining us, which is very important, you know, very important. THT is a huge part of what we do particularly. Um, and I think, you know, with some of the young players that are starting to make a, a name for themselves, guys coming into the league, breaking out and all of that, um, I, I want him to get his opportunity and I, and I want to see what he can do with it. You know, I, I know for a fact that he's a fantastic player. Obviously, his metrics, his arms, and his hands being so, you know, as they are, he can help us in ways that are abnormal for his height. Um, and his skill set, he's fantastic. He has a lot of good things going for himself. We just have to continue to teach him how to play team ball, teach him how to, uh, you know, help us on the defensive end, be more effective on that end, and, uh, you know, mold him into the player that we know he can become. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to look at our team and say, boy, we're struggling without our stars. But what we don't have also is probably our number one six man. So if we get him into the fold, some of these games without Braun and some of these games without AD, they're going to be more competitive because he's going to have his confidence. He's going to be doing the things that he does. And I think he can, you know, at his best, he can give you 25 points, three steals, eight assists, like eight boards. Like he can really mold himself into becoming that type of productive star level player over the next several years. So it's our job to make sure that he gets those opportunities gets that type of confidence and gets that, that type of conditioning going in. Because um, the mechanics, the skill set, it's there. He can shoot, he can drive, he has all types of scoop shots, all types of different things that he can do, handle, all that. So, you know, there's no question that we invested in this kid uh, heavily and and I and I expect that he's going to start to to show us in the stats that he can be that guy. Because uh, sometimes he really isn't. You know, you look at the stats and look at some of the, the opportunities he's had in 20-minute stretches in the past. Sometimes he just, he, you know, he didn't show up. And then other times he'd do big things. You'd be like, okay, we know what that that upside, we see the glimpses of it. So with him starting off the season not healthy, it just it frustrates me a little bit because I want to see him step into that, that confidence and start being that player that I believe he can be. So uh, that that's something I'm going to be looking forward to very soon whenever he gets back. Um and so on and so forth. Carmelo Anthony kind of cooled down tonight. And I wasn't too surprised because, you know, he was going back into the place where he played his last two, three years. Uh, so I figured they would be the least surprised by his well play. And they would know how best to attack him. So I felt like they had a defensive plan for Carmelo tonight. And uh, they executed it pretty well. But he was still able to shoot the ball just well. But uh, he didn't have his normal type of night tonight. I expect him to bounce right back. Um. You know, he fits in comfortably with this system, although we are missing some of our best players uh, that help him make, you know, help make his life much easier. All in all, he's still a guy who can, who can shoot over a, 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 a highly contested <laughs> player and, uh, and and have no issue doing so. So as he continues to uh, show us that, uh, I'm going to continue to have that type of confidence in him. So this was just a bump in the road. No big deal. Um Rajon Rondo was a player that I'm looking at, and I'm saying, you know, I look at the box score, I look at his minutes, I say, you know, we kind of needed what he could give us tonight, but I just didn't think he had it like that. Uh, based on the highlights, it didn't show me a lot. But, you know, I'm just wondering. I've been hearing fans murmuring about how he's playing, and I just haven't seen a whole lot of him. Um, and when I do see him out there, he's, he's, he's running around a little bit, but uh, not as impactful as I remember 2020, of course, but still it's early, you know, that kind of thing. So... Um, I'm just just curious to see how he's how he's going to be playing over the next several games, um, what where he's headed up or down in terms of his 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 play on the court. Now off the court, he's a coach. He's going to help us regardless. But on the court, we're giving him minutes, and I, I want to see uh, if he can continue to do the things that we know Rondo can do at the level that he's he's been able to do it over the last couple of years. Um, but I do like the fact that we have other playmakers. HBK is helping us a lot. Uh, in that way, he's continued to do good things, shoot the ball, stuff like that on the offensive end. So um, if Rondo's not not going to be that guy anymore, you know, I think we still have the personnel in place to help us help us do all the things that he does while Ron ain't on the floor. 
And, uh, you know, Westbrook, I just, it's hard, man, because it's like you're looking at him through new eyes when he's on your team, you know. All of the stuff people used to complain about, now you're dealing with him. And it's like, you know, I made a video earlier talking about the Chicago Bulls and how Lonzo Ball was pushing the ball and doing all these different things that he does to make their team uh, kind of go. And I look at Russell Westbrook and I say, I want to believe in him like that, but he literally looks like the complete opposite to me in terms of being unsure where the ball goes, off-timed with his passes, not making good decisions in those passes. There were certain passes that he made tonight that were just like, that's, that's, that's very easily uh, visibly contested. Like that, that's, You could see it before he lets it go that it wasn't going to be good. And it's just stuff like that. It's like, you know, I'm used to watching high-level playmakers these days, even youngsters who just don't make those passes. And it's just like, man, you really, really want to believe in Russell Westbrook as a point guard, but your eyes do not lie to you. He's just forcing passes that just aren't good passes. Uh, he's, he's trying to force the ball to places that just aren't high IQ decisions. And, 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 and we saw more of the same, more of the same. Um, so... It, it's it's difficult for me because I have faith in the player. I know what I've seen over the years. I know what his stats tell me. I know I know what his, his, his accomplishments are. But I also have to look at him just as a player who's playing basketball right now. And I'm just saying he's struggling quite a bit. And he's not struggling with things that are very easy to watch him struggle with. You know, if a guy is contesting a play, you just don't want to see your, your quarterback throw it. <laughs> throw it in that direction you know what I mean if you know a, a play is covered go a different direction please don't leave your feet um and pass you know what I mean guys are not on a string with you that kind of thing so please be patient with uh having that second nature mentality about passing the rock you know a guy's not gonna be there these are not the old players that you used to play with so you can't just automatically think a guy's going to be in a spot that maybe some of your other guys used to be at OKC. It's just stuff like that. It's like, man, he's got to break those habits, and it's hard to do so uh, when he's constantly playing with different players because guys going in and out of the lineup. So, and I'm trying to be patient with Russell. I know he's frustrated. You know what I mean? It's easy to, to, to point a guy's weaknesses out and, and kick him out of down. But, you know, if I've learned anything, it's just you can't, you can't underestimate greatness. A guy like Russell Westbrook at any moment could go for a 2020 game, and we're all calling him the greatest person ever. So even in the midst of a 2020 game, I will be more impressed if he has a zero turnover game. That's the type of stuff I want to see from Russell Westbrook. I don't give a dang about high stats because I know what he can do in that way. You want to win us over, overcome these weaknesses, make some pro progressions in these weaknesses. Uh, that's, that's how you win if you're Russell at this point. You got you got to start chipping away at some of these real real weaknesses, you know, because because other other aspects of other aspects of uh, like goals at this point for for a player that great, it, it's just shooting in the wrong direction. You know what I mean? You've already built yourself to be such a great statistical player. You've already built yourself to be a Hall of Famer and all of that. So so the goals that, that I would have if I were at that level of what I do is to try to chip away at some of those things that I do so terribly. You know what I mean? Try to try to try to work on those weaknesses. And unfortunately his weaknesses are so visible and glaring, you know what I mean? Just like the things that he does uh that are entertaining, so are the things that he does that aren't so entertaining. So as to other guys who have subtle weaknesses, maybe a guy sucks at the free throw line. Maybe a guy doesn't set good screens. Maybe a guy isn't that good at positioning himself on the boards. For a guy like Russell Westbrook, it's more so knowing when to pass the rock. Not passing, you know, out off of in midair, that kind of thing. Not throwing the ball across court, stuff like that. Things that most players don't do. Unfortunately, he, he finds himself doing a lot. So um, I just want to see him. I want to see him win. I want to see him not only win championships, but win in this regard uh, and overcome these weaknesses and, and, and feel good about his about, about doing so in the purple and gold, man. You know, we want to see him win. We don't want to want this to end with us saying, you know, we got to trade this guy. Uh, and I know a lot of Laker fans are going to be hasty and say that stupid stuff like that. I'm not there. I'm not I'm not going to even think like that. I think um, the, the bad fit is real. I think the, the concerns are real. The puzzle is real. 
the path to this failing is real. But the reality is we have so many great players, uh, such a good infrastructure uh, of, of basketball minds uh, that I think will ultimately uh, get the most out of ourselves. Now, will the field allow us to be the champion? At this point, I'm not certain of that. I'm not going to sit up here and, and play with people and say, I just think it's a foregone conclusion the Lakers are going to be the champions. No, I'm, I don't know that. The field is serious, and they got some real teams out there. But I think we will be in the mix, and I think ultimately we'll give ourselves an opportunity to get it. Uh, and that's all we can ask for. So we'll see, man. My name is BDF44. I thank you all for watching. I'm out.